right, the third type of indeterminate form we're going to talk about is sometimes called indeterminate differences. And the idea is one part's going to positive infinity, the other part's going to negative infinity. So infinity minus infinity or negative infinity plus infinity equivalently. And these are a little less mechanical, I think, than some of the other problems, the other ones. So sometimes you just have to be a little clever on how you deal with them. Um, in this case, the limit is x goes to infinity of x squared minus x. Intuitively, to me, x squared is getting much bigger, much faster than x, so it seems like this should still go off to infinity. And kind of an easy way to justify that is, is by factoring out an x. Well, now as x goes to infinity, well, x is going to infinity. x minus 1 is also going to infinity. You have infinity times infinity, which is infinity. And that's your answer. Um, let's do another one here, maybe one that's not so easy. Suppose we have the limit as x goes to infinity. I have x times e to the 1 over x minus x. Okay, so in this case, certainly the x's are going to infinity. The 1 over x is going to 0 as x goes to infinity. So really this is like having infinity times 1 minus infinity. Or again, you have the indeterminate form infinity minus infinity. Just like in the last problem to get started, I'm going to factor out an x. Now I have e to the 1 over x minus 1. And notice again, as x goes to infinity, I'm going to have e to the 0, or 1 minus 1 in the parentheses. I'm going to have infinity times 0. So now I've turned it from one of these indeterminate differences into an indeterminate product. And at this point, I'm now going to do as in the last case. I'm going to put one of these in the denominator. So I'm going to leave the e to the 1 over x minus 1 in the numerator. I usually leave the more complicated expression in the top. In the bottom, I'll have the derivative, or excuse me, I'll take 1 over the x. And now, if I use L'Hopital's rule on this, I'm going to have the limit as x goes to infinity. The derivative of e to the 1 over x is e to the 1 over x. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of that. So this is like x to the negative first, so I'll get negative x to the negative second. Same thing on the bottom. The derivative, this is x to the negative first. I'll get negative x to the negative second. Well, again, let's simplify down. The negative x to the negative second and the negative x to the negative second will cancel. So I'm really left with e to the 1 over x. But as x goes to infinity, I'm going to get e to the 0, or 1 is my solution. Let's do one more of these. I've got the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over ln of x minus 1 over x minus 1. So ln of 1 is 0. You're getting 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0. And you can kind of think about that as being infinity minus infinity. A lot of times if you have fractions floating around, um, a good idea will be to simply get common denominators. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 1, I'll have x minus 1 minus ln of x in the numerator times, and then, excuse me, in the denominator, I'll have ln of x times x minus 1, okay, after I get my common denominators. So this one's going to be a little bit tedious here, but that's okay. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. You could again check that if you plug 1 in, you're getting 0 over 0 on the top. So the derivative of the top, the derivative of x is 1. The, the negative 1 will turn into 0. Then I'll have minus the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. On the bottom, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. I'll leave the x minus 1 alone. Plus, I'll leave the ln of x term alone. If I multiply that by the derivative, I'll get times 1. So again, now at this point, basically what you're going to want to do is clean this up a little bit. So one thing you could do, um, probably the easiest thing to me is, 
you could multiply top and bottom of this. So I'm going to try to get rid of this 1 over x. I don't like that. So I'm going to multiply the denominator all by x. Well, I'm going to have to also, also multiply the numerator all by x. So if I multiply the numerator all by x, I'll get x here minus 1. The 1 over x will cancel out in the first term, leaving me with x minus 1 plus x times ln of x. So again, a little tedious here. Um, you got to be careful with your algebra. Again, if we plug in 1 at this point, notice we'll get 0 on top. I'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0. 1 times 0. I'm getting 0 over 0 again, which means I can now use L'Hopital's rule yet again. I'll have the limit as x approaches 1. The derivative of the top is just 1. I'll have 1. The derivative of negative 1 is gone. Again, I'm going to have to use the product rule on the x times ln of x term. So the derivative of x is 1. I'll leave the ln of x term alone. Plus, now I'll leave the x term alone. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And if I simplify this down, notice there's a 1 on top. So I'm not going to get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. I'll have 1 on top. 1 plus, recall ln of 1 is 0. Then I'll have 1 times 1 over 1. So I'm really left with 1 over 1 plus 1 or one half is my answer in this case. So pretty long problem, a uh, little tedious, got to be a little clever on how you approach these. Um, and you, like I said, every time you do L'Hopital's rule, really try to simplify things down in the best way that you can, because otherwise it's just going to make your next derivatives a mess, and sometimes you just won't see how things cancel out and simplify down.